Hi, I am Elle and this is T. And we are here to talk to you about our trip to Iceland. So we've been here for a few days. We've done four nights and three days. So on day one, we came in from the airport late at night. We did take the fly bus, which came with a lot of recommendations when you look up online trips to Iceland. Um, however, the when it's freezing cold out and you have all your bags and you're waiting in line with a bunch of people, it can be tough as my little one says. Um, so basically what happened, there was uh, tons of people with all their bags, it was freezing cold, the ice was blowing, the snow was blowing. We eventually did get on the, on the bus, um, but it took a while. And then the bus does drop you off at like a city center bus station, but it's not exactly right downtown where all the stores and hotels are. Um, so we had to find a cab. Um, there was a cab stand outside, but there's no cabs available. And luckily the people at the rental car company, which is in the bus station, they first just gave us a phone number to a cab company, but we couldn't get through. And then eventually they helped us out and called one and one was there pretty much within five minutes. So they drove us to our Airbnb, which was about like a 10 to 10 minute drive from the um, bus station, only because the roads were really snowy and icy. But we got on our Airbnb, which is right just downtown. Uh, we could walk to all the stores and restaurants. So next morning we went to Blue Lagoon, which was incredible. I highly recommend it, but you do have to book that in advance. So do not um, wait till last minute to Think you're gonna go to blue lagoon tomorrow you have to go you have to book this weeks in advance so we did that um probably maybe like a couple of months in advance we booked this so we did the premium package um so with that you get a bathrobe you get a couple of extra masks and they do give you a round of drinks um, complimentary at the restaurant there, but the restaurant there is extremely expensive. It's pretty much fine dining. So for us, that just wasn't the best fit. So we just used the cafeteria. We didn't go to the restaurant to eat, but Blue Lagoon was awesome. Highly recommend. Um, when you go in, if you have long hair like me, or and even if you're a guy and have short hair, I highly recommend lathering your hair with um, conditioner because your hair, if you don't do that, your hair will feel like straw for a while afterwards. Um, and then um, T's gonna tell you a little bit about how he felt about Blue Lagoon. Well, first thing, please put conditioner in your hair. I, we just went a couple of days ago and it's, my hair is still like straw. The second thing, that I'm not really a fan of the Blue Lagoon. I know she talked about how good it was, and that is because she didn't have to wear floaties. Now, I am on a swim team. I am extremely good at swimming. I am eight years old. They said if you're eight years old and under, you have to wear a floaty. Even if you are, even, I wish they had like a swim test or something that could at least help. No, I was embarrassing myself the whole time, and if she did, um, post any photos, I, you won't see them because I either took them off or hid them, but I, I, if you have children under eight and they can swim extremely good, say that they're like nine or ten please <laughs> so um we were honest with his age when we walked in and we said he was eight so if you're eight and under you do have to wear swimmies which is sort of a bummer um but i understand their point of view for safety it is very steamy and you can't see very far ahead of you at times um but it isn't very deep it's probably around uh, maybe like four feet deep no, right? not even some parts are like three some parts are five but i don't think anything was five feet maybe deep. not five but like Four and a half. It mostly I could touch them. Four feet two. So um, that was the drawback for him. But other than that, we had a great time there. I do recommend also going first thing in the morning as early as you can because it's not as crowded then. We um, we got there around eleven thirty ish, and when we were leaving at three, the line was crazy going into the um, the lagoon. Um, reception area and there was just tons of people in the lagoon itself area at that time but when we got there um it was great we probably pretty much it was not crowded at all um one other thing i'll say if you're traveling to the airport from the lagoon there is a place that you can pay extra and you can store your luggage um which is great it is a little trek of a walk so if you're older and you know you're weak or anything like that. It is a trek from the bus where in the parking lot to the actual lagoon. It's like this little path of snow that can be sometimes deep at times. And I think T wants to add one more thing. Um. Now, do you know how on 
most people watching this know on airport in airports there's like priority boarding for like the premium however there is not at the blue lagoon so keep in keep in mind that there isn't any like priority check-in or... well we did we got the premium package so we got in the premium line so we didn't have to wait with everyone else yeah and you got a bathroom still, we got like a bathroom but it was still quite long the line even in the premium line when we were leaving when we were leaving yeah so absolutely e even if you have the premium package still go early in the morning so another thing um you got to be flexible here so when we were booked for the blue lagoon um we were supposed to leave around 9 30 but it had snowed quite a bit overnight um so we waited outside in a blizzard outside of the main church i don't know exactly what that bus stop's called, but um, when you bus book stop eight. bus stop eight, when you book the tour, they ask you, you know, where you want to be picked up because there's a pickup service that you can pay for, which is great. I highly recommend that. And we picked bus stop eight, which is near that main church you see in all the pictures. Um, but there's really no coverage there, so we we're like leaned up against the church along with everyone else while we waited for the bus. So they give you like a half hour window. They came at the very end and they explained that the weather was terrible and that they were going to bring us to a bus stop which is a hostel, to wait until the roads open because they do close the roads to the Blue Lagoon. It's about a 40-minute drive from downtown Reykjavik. Um, so we were almost ready to call it quits, um, but then someone just come, came and yelled and said, Blue Lagoon, and we all got on the bus and we made it, and it was awesome. Um, so that was that, and um, Blue Lagoon, it's, it's, it's very touristy, but it's so awesome, and it was so much fun, and your skin feels amazing afterwards, and then there's a little gift shop, and you can buy all the little masks and products. Um, day two, we did um, a full coast tour, a full of the southern area of the country. Um, so we used the app called Viator, V-I-A-T-O-R, and um, it was lasted about 10 hours. So they, they ask you where you want to be picked up, which hotel. So we just kind of looked on a map and found a hotel that was close to our Airbnb um, and picked that bus stop. So the bus stops are numbered, um, and they're all pretty much very easy to use. So um, we found a local hotel we could go right down the street with. Um, and then, so we, and what happens is they'll tell you, they'll give you like a half an hour window. So pick up at over between eight and 8.30. Um, we have found not to go early because they never come early. They always come around the very later side and it's freezing cold out here in January, but we loved coming in January and we had a blast. Um, so this Mercedes Sprinter picked us up. We had this awesome tour guide. Um, the bus was warm and cozy, and um, I'm not going to get the exact names of the um, destinations we went to, but we two, saw two incredible waterfalls, and then after, and after that we saw a glacier, and um, last we went to the Black Sand Beach, which is awesome. It's so beautiful. Um, and all these, there's all these like little black rocks um, that are shiny. Um, the one thing we we are used to the water and the ocean and the coast. We're from New England, um, but you can't get very close to the water because the waves have this huge undertow that they actually go under the sand and they can Crazy. pull you out pretty quickly. And um, we saw a lot of people get wet, um, so you just got to be careful there. But. The scenery in the bus tour, bus on the bus tour was even worth it. And you go through all these mountains and see these snow little villages and horses, and it was fantastic. So that cost on the um, we booked this in advance as well, and that cost two hundred and forty nine U.S. dollars for two adults and one child. Completely worth it. Um, I do suggest. Just a couple of tips um, when you come to Iceland, especially in the winter, make sure you pack lots of warm clothes. Um, so we each had one of those mad bomber hats and underneath that we had like a little kind of beanie that was attached to a neck warmer and those were fantastic. Uh, bring lots of snacks if you go on a tour because you're not really sure when you're going to stop and all that. But all the places, most of the places we stopped, including the waterfalls, which were very rural, have a little, they have bathrooms and they have a little like um, snack stand where you can get some coffee or some drinks. So that was good. Um, and um pack some water and bring some plastic bags from home if you can't come. When you go shopping around here, um, you have to pay extra for bags. They usually don't provide them. So if you're gonna go buy some goodies or go to the grocery store, or you're gonna go shopping for um, some souvenirs. Um, it's much easier if you have a little bag packed away in your backpack. And that's about it. And our third day, we walked just around Iceland's um, Reykjavik Center. And T is gonna show you a little something that he bought that was special, he thought. So when you go to the Blue Lagoon, 
make sure to get the masks. <laughs> so these are the masks that um, you get when you go in the blue lagoon. You swim up to this kind of like bar and you put your hand out and they give you a bunch of masks to try and um, you leave it on for like five or ten minutes and everything feels great afterwards. So that's all. So please come to Iceland in January. It's an amazing trip. We loved it and um, I hope to be back again.